This is the Fractal North. I got my hands on this thing and this thing is beautiful. I was a little skeptical of the wood on the front, just it being wood and all, but it's really grown on me. The buttons up top are super luxury. Well, the one button, headphone, microphone jack, USBs, comes with USB type C, which is nice, always a plus. Top grill, super nice. I don't know if you guys can really see that, but this quality is just probably one of the nicest finished qualities I've ever seen on a case. This leather thing I think is kind of gimmicky. Give you a little piece of leather, fake leather probably, whatever. Solid back panel. I really like the back vent and grill. I really like this design, how it's all just turns into one. PCI vents are, uh, they remind me of the old Silverstone PCI vents. I really like this look. As you can see, every PCI slot has its own thumb screw, which is nice. Two 140 millimeter fans are included in the front. There is a front dust filter. No fans in the back, but I'm pretty sure you'd be able to mount a fan back there if you really wanted to. They don't give you the actual holes to do it though, so you might kind of scratch up the finish a little bit, but I don't think this case was designed to have rear fans. This design is just supposed to be a vented exhaust where the pause, the pressure comes into the case and just it all just gets exhausted out. Mind you, if you put a couple of 140 millimeter fans or 120 couple fans that are move more air than what your intake fans are gonna do, it's gonna create a negative pressure in your case and it's gonna end up sucking dust in through all these vented holes. So keep that in mind. But that's just like any computer case. Positive pressure, you're gonna be exhausting air out of all the, the vents. Negative pressure, you're gonna be sucking air in through all the vents. And if it doesn't have a dust filter, that's how you're gonna get a lot of dust in there. Thumb screw, thumb screw. All right, let's just come off here. Okay, so here's something I don't like about this case. To get this panel off, you gotta pull it out a little bit and then it'll probably unlatch itself. Yeah, there, so you gotta pull it out. That's no fault of uh, Fractal that I just did that. That's my own stupidity, almost breaking that. That's one reason why you leave all the plastic on your uh, glass window panels because you do stuff like what I just did, dropping panels and then it gets scratched. So leave your plastic on the side panel until your the build is done. But yeah, I didn't really like that. I wish they would have had like a little latch. You could pull it once you undo the thumb screw, but whatever. Really nice on the inside. Super nice. Two included fractal 140s. Awesome cable management sort of rubber. I don't know what you'd call these grommets over the cable management holes. Cable management holes here and here. I like these holes. This hole will be perfect for the motherboard plugins for all your front panel stuff, USB stuff. Included motherboard standoffs for ATX. It also has micro ATX and ITX. And once again, this middle standoff is just the, you just mount it on there. You don't got to screw it in. The motherboard just sits on there. And that's really nice because in the old cases, probably still some cases, you would have had a regular standoff screw right here, which meant that when you mount your motherboard on, you would have to undo all the heat sinks off the motherboard to get a screw in there to mount it. But because you're able to just set it on here, you don't have to screw around with taking apart the motherboard, just put a screw in. So I really like that. A lot of cases are doing that, which is good. Okay, let's take this top grill off. Well, let's take this side panel off first. Super tight. Tr 
trusty screwdriver to get these thumb screws off. Don't do what I do, use proper tools. I'm just an idiot. But if it works, it works. See, this panel's got a little thing you can grab on to pull it out. The, the main window one didn't have that, so you gotta pull it out by the thumb screws and then you do what I did. Okay, this is awesome. You got these awesome little Velcro straps for cable management. Everything's already pretty much pre-managed, which is awesome. We're gonna have, probably have to undo a lot of this stuff when we're building, but maybe not. Front panel connections and everything. USB, USB, and it's probably HD audio. You can mount a couple of three and a half inch SSDs right there. Then you got a five and a quarter inch drive bay down here and a five and a quarter inch drive bay down here. Which are thumb screwed in. Easy enough to remove these little caddies. I'll leave them out in my build. I like using, I don't use the old big hard drives, the old spinning disc. So this is always a good area to store all your power cables with your PSU. Dust filter for the power supply. Going back to the front, I just want to talk about the cable management again. You got your hole here, your hole here. You got your hole up here for CPU power cable, whatever else you want to bring. It would have been nice to have another hole here. So there's a fault with this case. It would have been kind of nice to have something up here. There's not a whole lot of room up here working to work with. It would have been nice to have another hole here for routing cables. I mean, you got these big ones here though, so that'll be fine. What I really like is this big gaping hole here because I'm going to be able to have my video card power cable coming up through here, along here, and then into my video card right there. I like how I don't have to have it coming across and then under the card and then up and connect. It's, I really like when cases have this big gaping hole at the front here. Cable, my cable will just be able to come connect instead of connect. So that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna try to mount my 280 millimeter radiator up here with 240 millimeter fans. Now Fractal gives, uh, the specs for this case that you, is that you can do a 240 millimeter radiator, so 220 millimeter fans, but not a 280. I'm gonna try to fit a 280 up here. There's not a whole lot of room to work with, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. If that's the case, I'll mount my front radiator, radiator at the front, or I guess my radiator at the front because my, it looks like I'll be able to remove these fans out. I'll be able to put my radiator in where the fans are and then I'll just put my fans on the other side of the radiator. Or I'll put my radiator here and the fans, blah, I don't know what, I'll figure something out. But I'm gonna try to get the radiator up here with the fans blowing air out and then keep these intake fans here. But if I'm not able to do that, we'll put these two fans up here because up here you can mount 140 millimeter fans, then we'll have the radiator and water cooler up there. Ooh, comes off pretty easy. I was expecting it to be harder, but it came off quite easy. So yeah, as you can see, here are the mounting holes for 120 and then 140 fans. I'm gonna try to fit the radiator. I don't know if it's gonna work. My 140s, like it might not fit lengthwise with the two 140s. I'm sure it'll fit, but then my cables on my radiator, maybe they will fit down here and then come and go over to the CPU. The cables on the water cooler, the tubes on the water cooler. Hopefully there's enough clearance here. You'll see what I mean when I do it. There's a screw up here, thumb screw. Oh, fell out. So this little panel comes off there. I don't know if this whole 
thing comes off or just this little side part comes off. So you take the one thumb screw out there and then just pull it out. Kind of like a door or something, I don't know. Comes off like that. Hmm. I don't know how to get in there, so I'm gonna have to access the old manual. So there's gotta be a way to, maybe this just pops off. I just don't wanna break it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check the manual to see how this. Okay, just looking at the manual here. It looks like this, take a couple screws off here. I will probably lose these screws. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to take this off, but first I got to remove this. This full front bezel does just pop off. Oh yeah, there's a little spot right there to get on. Oh yeah, easy, easy. So you don't even really need to take this off, this part off, this top. I thought you had to take this off before you took that off, but I didn't read the manual because I'm dumb and impatient. So if I would have read the manual, I would have realized that that just pops off real easy. So yeah, easy enough to take these fans out, take them out, install a front radiator where the fans go, and then I guess your fans can sit on the on this side of this bracket. Manual talks about mounting a 120 millimeter fan on the back if you want, which I probably will, why not? Put this back on, there's no point of taking this off. But I'm gonna leave the front bezel off, I'm gonna leave this side thing off because if I can't get my radiator up here to work to fit, I'm gonna put it here, so I'm just gonna leave all this stuff off. Okay, I'm gonna start building in this case, I'm gonna start transferring all my components from my other case into this one. Let you know how it goes. I got a 3090 video card, Founders Edition 3090. There'll be enough room there. Don't like. I really don't like trying to get this side panel off this case at all. Should have put something on here where you could pull instead of having to use the thumb screws to pull because the thumb screws just come out. So you're just yanking on them. So when I install my fans, it's gonna be completely flush. With that. Then there's overhang on the radiator. There's this half an inch or so on both sides. So I don't think the radiator is gonna fit with the fans. I think Fractal, Fractal could have made it so that you could have a 280 millimeter up here, but they made it so that you can't. Okay, I had to move all this stuff down to my little pit in my basement, my little building pit. So I'm gonna be taking all the stuff from this, from this Fractal case that I did a previous video, Fractal Pop XL, that I did a previous video on. Take all this stuff, put it into my, this new North case. I got so much junk down here. I got cases down there. I got the NZXT H5 Flow. I got the Corsair 4000X. I got the NZXT H7 Flow. I'm doing a video on that one soon. I got too many boxes of cases, just junk everywhere. I got too much junk. This hobby is just a junk hobby, but I love it. It's awesome. Another little thing that Fractal does that I like is they give you vent holes 
on this power, where the power supply goes in case you wanted to have your fan sucking air from inside the case, depending on how you, which orientation you want to mount your power supply. This is a fractal case too, and it's got the same thing. Not all cases have that. Here's the NZXT, you probably can't see, but they don't have vent holes down there. It's too hard to see, but trust me. Trust me, bro. It's just a nice little feature, extra feature. I still recommend you mount your PSU so that your fan is on the bottom sucking air through the dust filter. Okay, I got my power supply installed into the back of the case. I had to take this bracket off with thumb screws, install this onto the power supply, then the whole unit just fit in and everything just fits in there. So I ran all my cables, my motherboard power, my eight pin CPU power. There's a hole up there for that. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Got my GPU power cable coming up through the front, which I like. Then I'll be able to just plug this in on my GPU. I would have liked to seen a hole up in here somewhere for fans up on here for them to be able to run in there and then down and then out or wherever. Just easier for cable management if there would have been a hole somewhere up here. Okay, let's put the motherboard in and the radiator. See if it fits up here. I don't think it's going to, so we'll have to put that up here. Got my motherboard in, got my 280 in here trying to get it to fit, but it won't. It just, there's not enough clearance for it to fit. Cause I got this on the B550F Strix. It just, there's not enough clearance for this to fit in there. The holes for the 140 millimeter fans are down here, which are well below the required clearance needed. So if you're getting this case, put your, you either need a, like I don't even know if the 120s would fit. The 120 radiator would, radiator would fit, it'd be close. You can probably get a 120 by 120, a 240 radiator up top, but if you got a 280, radiator your only option is the front so that's what i'm gonna have to do is put that in the front the radiator fans where these fans are and then have the radiator on this side of this little bracket thing blowing air in one thing i don't like about this case is the fans are installed to the act like to the chassis of the case, the chassis of the case it would have been better if the fans were kind of installed to this front bezel so you could unplug the fans, take the bezel off, and then replace the fans on here instead of having to do it in here because the fans are screwed in right here and this is where all your components are. So it's kind of tough to get in here with the screwdriver, especially if you have your video card installed and everything. So if you're planning on changing out these fans, do it before you put everything in. But that being said, if your PC is already built and you want to change out the fans, it's kind of a pain to get in here. Like, as you can see, everything's in the way. So, I'm just gonna take all this back out. I didn't screw it in yet, I just have it all sitting in there, but I'm gonna take it all out just to redo these fans, take these fans out. So I got these front fans out. Now I'm gonna have to take the fans off my all-in-one cooler, install those here, and then reinstall the radiator on this side, on the inside. This case isn't really all-in-one air cooler friendly. It's more of an air cooled case friendly case. If you're just doing an air cooled build, this case is really friendly for you. But if you're doing any all-in-one stuff, it just makes things more complicated, more difficult. Okay, what I was thinking was just installing the radiator and the fans all on this side of the case, all on this side of this bracket. So it would take up this whole space but that's not gonna work because I have a 3090 and the length of the 3090 comes into here. So there's gonna just be enough clearance for the 3090 to fit and then the radiator up against here and then the fans will have to go on this side of the bracket, the way it's designed. I was hoping I could just make it easier by not having to take all that apart and just stalling out on there, but I can't do it. 
Okay, I got the radiator installed. It's a little dusty. I should clean. I should have cleaned that out, but whatever. And I got the fans here. I had to replace my EVGA fans. I went with this all-in-one cooler with the fractal fans that came with the case, just because the power cables are long enough to reach the motherboard. Because when you have a top-mounted all-in-one cooler, the power cables on the fans don't have to be that long because they just mount in the motherboard up here. I don't like this case because I'm unable to mount my 280 on the top. I don't like having radiators at the front. Personally. If you don't mind this, then this case is perfect. Okay, so I got my connect my fan connections to the all-in-one for my radiator. It would have been nice to have a hole up here so I could run these through up there instead of having to run them across through there or backwards through here. So I'm gonna run them through here. It's not a big problem because the lengths of the fans are long enough to reach. But if I was using my EVGA fans that came with the radiator, they would have been much shorter. They would have been much shorter and I wouldn't have been able to run the connector of the from the all-in-one to here. I would have had to have come out here. Okay, I got this monstrosity in the case, the RTX 3090. The RTX 4090 is even longer, I believe. Like I barely got enough room here with the 3090. It's like three quarters of an inch maybe, I don't know. So if you got a 4090, Make sure you're doing your measurements. It might fit, like, I, cause I got this radiator in here too. So it's that I lose an inch there, or however, half an inch, an inch, whatever, however wide a radiator is. So I'm not gonna put any fans up here. I'm gonna have just 120 millimeter exhaust. I got the two 140 intakes going through the radiator. And I'm only having one 120. The reason for that is I don't want to create a negative pressure in my case. I was going to have a bunch of, like if you have fan here, fan here, fan here, all exhausting, and you have more airflow leaving the case than is going in, you're going to start pulling dust in because your pressures are going to try to equalize from the outside to the inside. So you're just going to pull a bunch of dusty air through all the little vent holes everywhere. So my plan is to have positive pressure just the two intakes blowing in, one exhaust, and then hopefully the positive pressure will try to equalize and air will go out all the vent holes from inside the case, not allowing any more dust in. So Fractal gives you these little grommet things, rubber or whatever material this is. I don't know what they're used for, but when I try to mount my fans with it, like it's just, it's like they're not made for, it's like they made it so you don't want to have a fan here on the back. But I want to have a fan there, so. It's very ugly with these. Maybe I'll take this off, put one up top just to blow up. That might work. Nah, I'm not doing that, I don't care really. So I took the 120 exhaust off the back just because I really like this look. Nice, clean keep that clean and I put the 120 exhaust up top here. So I'll have my one exhaust fan up here. It says you can put two 140 millimeter fans up here, but you're probably gonna wanna stay, if you're putting exhaust fans up here, you're gonna wanna stick to 120 because my 120 just clears with the CPU power there. As you can see, like it's touching it right now. If a 140, it's gotta go back another 20 millimeters and it's gonna get in the way of your CPU power. So 140, this is not a 140 friendly case up top here. 120s it is. I'm just gonna have the one fan. Exhausting. Every other case, most of them have holes here. So I don't know why they didn't put a hole there. I guess they don't want you having any other fans installed anywhere without making it more difficult than it has to be. And I don't wanna bring my fan cable through there and then have to run it up. It's just nicer to have it up, all up top. There, so I got my fan 
coming from the back, my power fan cable and then plug it in there. Not a big deal, but it just would have been nice to have a hole up there. So I just put the side panel on, the back side panel, and with the motherboard cable, power cable, like there wasn't much clearance. Let me show you. Here's my motherboard cable. So when I put this panel on it, kind of, you gotta push this. There's not much clearance between the panel and the back of the motherboard tray, the chassis. So this, there's not much clearance here. So I'm putting this on and it's already hitting. You gotta push it into place. Not a big deal, but it's just a little thing like that, that makes it less enjoyable to build in, especially with all the other things that I didn't really like about this case. Just adds to it. Okay, the build's done. I'm gonna go over a few things I like and what I don't like. I like the look of this case. That's about all this case has going for itself, is looks, aesthetics. That's what it's designed to be, an aesthetic case, not really a, building friendly case, not a performance case. Unless you're just doing a very basic build, I would get a different case, personally. It looks really nice. I really like this grill. Obviously, the f it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful looking case, but building in it was not enjoyable. Cable management wasn't that great. There's not much room in between the back panel and the back of the motherboard tray and everything. The holes are all not the greatest. Would have been nice to have this hole over here more so it lines up with your connections everywhere down there. They could have just made the hole longer. They could have made a hole up here, which would have been nice. Like normally my connector from my CPU to control all the stuff on here, I would have it come up here and go out there, then down behind and then up here. But in this case, I have to go this way and then I just went underneath. But like. It just, it's better. It was better before in other cases. Not a whole lot of room up front for big gigantic video cards. They fit though, so that's not an issue. Obviously, you can't really put 140s up here, up at the top. You gotta have 120 fans. And radiator mounts up top aren't really, it's not friendly to do at all. So, would I get this case again? No. Now, Will Fractal come out with a North XL in the future? I think they are, I think they're going to. And I assume that case will be a lot easier to build in, a lot better to build, build in. The biggest thing for me, just the little annoying things are just the cable management holes. Lack of.